I'm NASA astronaut Johnny Kim on board the International Space Station, and this device right here is called ARED. It stands for Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. And it's one of three machines I want to talk to you about today that we astronauts use on a daily basis to make sure that we stay healthy. Now, ARED is a pretty robust piece of equipment. It's been here for many years, and it gets seen by every astronaut. Right now, there's 10 astronauts who are assigned to this one and a half hours every single day. And through ARED, we can load up to 600 pounds of force through this barbell so that we can do all of our major compound movements. You might be wondering, how do we load force onto a bar when we're in a weightless environment because we're in space? Well, I'd like to show you this pretty cool engineering trick that NASA devised. So, Behind here, you see these two very large vacuum cylinders. And those is what provides the force that astronauts work against to do our exercises. The best way to think about it is a syringe right here. I've got a 30cc medical syringe. And when it's completely open to the atmosphere, I can just open it or close it without really much resistance. But if I were to make it a vacuum inside by simply plugging up the hole and I pulled against it, you can see I have that suction, the plunger is wanting to get sucked back in because of gravity. That's what these two are operating on, just at a much larger scale. And then through, um, some pretty clever engineering. We're able to change the leverage on our machine so that we can load anywhere from something as low as 10 pounds to as high as 600 pounds. I'm gonna demonstrate some of the compound movements that we do to keep our bones and our muscles healthy. And uh, the first one is gonna be, of course, our famous squat. What I'm doing right now is I'm changing the leverage, uh, the moment arm, so that I can increase weight. And that's how we do squats on a red. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how to do deadlifts. Now, these we call these um, arms and the main arms. And what we can do is, is we can actually adjust the the height of the barbell here. It goes anywhere from as high as here to here, and then actually you get even lower than that. We're able to flip these arms and then we can get all the way to the ground, which mimics a barbell being on the ground for deadlifts. Next, we'll demonstrate shoulder presses. We even have a modified bench that we do, that we can sit on. Uh, we can do sit-ups on here, we can do skull crushers, bench presses, and what I'm about to do is shoulder press. We have these little, um, I don't know what to say, maybe these little catches on, on the bottom um, that have these holes on the bottom that they match to, so we can lock the bench in place. Otherwise, it would just float away. Final exercise I'm going to show you for today is the bench. 
bench press. One thing I've noticed that's interesting is that my squat is much higher here on orbit than it is on Earth. On one hand, I like to think that I'm stronger, but I think it's mostly due because I don't have to lift my own, the, my own body's weight. And so um, I'm typically 175, 180 pounds. And uh, so I'm probably not having to lift, I don't know, anywhere from 60 to 70% of that. And so uh, the numbers we get up here for certain exercises are higher than what we would normally get on the ground. That's how we bench press on the International Space Station. We also do other isolated exercises, not just compound movements. Those include curls, upright rows, heel raises, but the compound major movements are what are largely responsible for astronauts maintaining their bone and muscular. Next, I'm gonna show you our two different cardio modalities. We have a stationary bike and a treadmill. All right, uh, I look sideways to you right now, and that's because the treadmill we call T2 on the International Space Station is actually on the wall. So when you see someone running, they're running on the wall. You might be wondering in space with in a microgravity environment, how do we run? And the answer is with bungees. So we've got these two pretty thick, heavy duty bungees on each end that French clip into our harness. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on and demonstrate how we run in space. Now the harness itself is, uh, we call it the Glenn harness. Um, and it's essentially a modified backpack slash rucksack waist belt with a shoulder, a Y shaped shoulder harness. So we've gone, look here. All right, so now I've got my harness on. Most of the, the tightness and the weight will go on my hips, just like a backpack should. And then I'm gonna French clip into these bungees. All right. So now I'm in place, and when I stand up, the bungees are pulling me against the treadmill. And so I am, I guess, kind of feeling like I'm standing on Earth. I feel a little bit of weight, it's not completely the same, but it's pretty good. Now running in space doesn't feel exactly like it does on the ground. You do have to modify your stride, your gait, but we make do with what we got. So the first thing is always a safety check, making sure that my equipment is configured properly. All right, once I've calibrated the system, we're gonna begin our run. God forbid I run longer than I need to. <laughs> so at the end of our run, what's pretty cool is that we get this end of workout summary. I mean, it didn't run very far, but what I always like, I think is kind of uh, fun, is comparing how far I ran. It looks like I only ran a quarter mile. And in that time, the ISS traveled 685 miles. So. That's a lot of distance. All right. Next, we're gonna show our last exercise modality, which is Seabus. 
our stationary bike. <clears throat> so this right here is my favorite cardio equipment on the space station. I'd say when I'm on Earth, I like to run more, but in space, I like the stationary bike more. And we call this Sevis. And uh, it's a pretty exceptional piece of equipment. We also do our, our max VO2 test, which is a measure of our fitness. And uh, we do that on this machine right here. So it is capable of quite a bit of pain. Now to, uh, now, I'm not a biker by any means, um, but for this stationary bike, we can't just use regular pedals. I mean, I guess on a typical exercise bike, you might just have pedals that have a little strap over it to keep your feet in place. Um, over here, we actually have special bike shoes that we use to clip in. All right. <laughs> And I like this little, this belt. Not everyone uses it, but I use this belt to kind of keep me in place so I don't float away. And once we've clipped in, we can throw our heart rate monitor on. I'll skip that for today. We log on to our profile and then we can just start a workout. Now, um, most of the workouts, a lot of the workouts are designed by our strength and conditioning coaches um, back at home in Houston. Uh, we can also run this in manual mode, which is what I'm doing right now. And I'm able to adjust the power measured in watts that I'm working against. This thing is pretty versatile. It can go, well, I'm, I've never been uh, good enough to go max this out, but I'm curious how far it goes. I guess 500, you can go up to 500 watts. <laughs> That's not what I'm biking up against. Um, but we can set this up. And uh, you just bike, throw your favorite movie on or the news on, listen to your favorite podcast, and just get to work. And we try and do this <clears throat> anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour every day, alternating between this and T2, and then A Red every single day. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, on both A Red and T2 is that each of our exercise devices are on what we call VIZ, a vibration isolation system. And that's pretty important because the force we generate, which can be a lot, especially if you're doing deadlifts or squats, we don't want that force to work its way into the station. We have very long moment arms. We have solar rays that are very large and pretty far from the center mass. And uh, so we don't want to damage our equipment. And so all of our exercise equipment is on these VIZ, you can see it, I have one on each corner here, and the vibrations that I'm creating from just the movement of my body are isolated to just the equipment I'm on. They're not impacted into station equipment, into station itself at all. And that's pretty important. All right, well, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope that helps you learn a little bit more about how astronauts stay healthy in space.